Well, good evening to everyone. Good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining us on this evening uh, for our pillar uh, Bible study here at the Pillar of Grace Church, Houston. Look, I want to encourage somebody uh, to stand firm on today. You've been wrestling with some things. You've been dealing with some issues. But God simply just said, stand firm. If you stand firm, he'll do the work. <clears throat> I don't know how you feel on tonight, but what I feel is that God is just simply getting ready to bless us as we get ready to get into our Tuesday night Bible study. Uh, let us uh, get ready to go before the throne of grace on this morning so God can be glorified in all our works. Our Father and our God, we tell you thank you on this evening. Oh, God, for who you are, we tell you thank you, oh, God, for what you're doing. We tell you thank you, God, for what you're doing in the life of each believer. We tell you thank you, God, because you're God all by yourself. And, God, you don't need anybody else. God, you've uh, made us. You know all about us. You've molded us into who you need for us to be for your people. And, God, we just want to glorify your name on this evening. God, we want to bless your name, God, because you first blessed us. And God, because you've been a blessing to us in our lives, God, we want to be a blessing to someone else. So God, we pray, God, that as this, this teaching goes forth on tonight, God, we pray, oh God, that you would have your way in us, through us, and with us. We pray, oh God, that you would allow Brian to hide behind the sacred cross. God, so when men and women look on me, God, they're not criticizing, they're not judging, but God, they don't see Brian, but they see the Christ that liveth on the inside. God, we pray right now for healing and strength. We pray, God, for power. It's in the mighty name of Jesus. Do we pray and ask it all? Amen, amen, and amen. Well, good evening, POGCH family and friends. Welcome on tonight uh, to our Tuesday night pillar Bible study. And we're going to uh, get into our task on tonight. And the subject matter I want to deal with on tonight uh, comes from uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 23 to 27. Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 27. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to talk about what is the cost of discipleship? The cost of discipleship, as we look at it in the book of Luke, uh, one of the four gospels, Luke, the one of the four gospels, Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 27, uh, gives us valuable insight. <clears throat> gives us some valuable insight uh, into Luke's understanding of the requirements for discipleship. I don't think a lot of us know or understand what the requirements are for discipleship because I think we get lost in everything that we have going on around us. But Yet and still, God is still working it out for our good. Even though this passage is not included uh, in the narrative, Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 50 are very significant. They're very significant and can be considered or introduced as a prologue to the narrative that Luke is trying to give in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 27. Luke chapter 23, verses 20 through 27 introduces us to what the cost of discipleship is that God is talking about. Luke turns from Jesus' first announcement of passion to the disciples' response. He turns from it with passion. When Jesus 
is seen foretelling of his own death and resurrection in 9 and 22. He announces to all of his disciples that what, whoever wants to follow him must first lay down and deny themselves and, and they ought to deny themselves and take up a cross daily. And I want to encourage you on the night that uh, some of us are afraid to take up a cross daily because we really don't want to follow God like God wants us to follow him. Uh, reading a, a book um, uh, about the secular world and the secular age. And I found out that there are a lot of things that we're doing. There are a lot of things that we're saying that God really is not pleased with. We're not living how God wants us to live. We're not doing what it is that God wants us to do. We're so caught up in secularism that we don't care about discipleship anymore. We try to make it mainstream and make it fit for everybody. But you got to understand as believers, as Christian believers, look, we have to stand firm and we have to do some things because God has charged us and commissioned us to do something great for his people. <clears throat> look, Jesus demands that whoever wants to follow him have to lose their life. And I ain't talking about losing your physical life, but I'm talking about lose the, 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 the worldly life, lose those things that are of the world and don't be ashamed of who he is. A lot of us uh, get so ashamed of who he is that we're afraid to stand on what we're standing on and why we're standing on it because we believe what we believe. But there are a lot of us that are challenged by other individuals where we have to understand that even in times like these, even when we're facing challenges, even when we have things that are going on in our lives, look, God simply wants for us and demands of us that we lay down our life. We lose our life in self. We, we give up self. And we take up the cross and follow him daily. Coming after Jesus, y'all, is not an easy task. But you better believe that you have some hope. Some of those standing here and uh, and certainly uh, have not tasted death before they see the kingdom of God. Whether the command is defined as taking up your cross or losing one's life. Not being ashamed of the son of man, it is apparent that followers must give themselves to Christ and rest in his care and receive him as he wants to receive you. This chapter that we're talking about, Luke chapter nine, verses 23 to 27, attempts to discern the meaning of the passage. Passage. This examination shows that whoever wants to follow Jesus must first accept him, accept his suffering, accept the sake of Jesus, accept the, that they might imitate their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And look, we have to whistle. If we're supposed to be like Christ, if we were born in, born and shaping in his likeness and in his image, you all, there has to be something about us that resembles him. And there are a lot of us walking around the world that we're so busy criticizing everybody. We're so busy talking about everybody that we're really not following who Christ is. We're really not following him. We, we, we don't emulate or show any of him in us. Let's look at some of the sources where we find out about the cost of discipleship. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 27 starts it and finds a direct parallel if you turn to Mark chapter 8, verses 34 uh, through Mark chapter 9, verse 1. And then go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 28. And in all three of these gospels, in all three synoptic gospels, these words stand after Peter's confession and Jesus' passion announcement. Jesus' passion announcement. Jesus letting his disciples know, hey, I'm, I'm going to leave here. I'm going to leave here. I'm not going to be here any longer. And what I need for you to do is I need for you to understand that I am no longer going to be with you in flesh, but I'll be with you in spirit. Many regard these as original distinct sayings by Jesus. The fundamental teaching and its as axiomatic style shall show that this material could well have been recited in many different settings. Luke has conceptual 
parallels in three different passages showing that self-denial. Y'all, sometimes we just got to deny ourselves. And when we deny ourselves, he told you, you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross daily and follow me. When we're denying ourselves, when we're really being disciples, when we're denying ourselves, what we're doing is we're putting self to the side and we're looking on the inside. We're killing all those things that are not like Christ. We're denying those things of the flesh and we're looking at those things of the, of the spirit and we're trying to do what it is that God wants for us to do. We're trying to make significant changes in our own lives so we can have a, a, a good life with Christ. Luke, com Luke combines 9, 23 and 27 much more closely with 9, 21 and 22. Then does his sources, other sources might give. Luke chapter 9, verse 21 to 22 you all offer a brief paradigm of the essential original confession that the crucified and risen Jesus was the Messiah. All 9 through 24 through 27 illustrate the cardinal statement that to be found in 9 and 23 because it, it's introductory three times and promising a reward, especially when we look at Matt, I'm sorry, when we look at Luke chapter 9, verse 25, it's it's tying into 9 and 24 by the common use of the verb to lose. When you lose something, y'all, you, you try to go seek and find what you've lost. But in this case, what God wants you to lose is he wants you to lose self. And sometimes it's good if we leave self by the roadside, if we leave self laid off. Why? Because sometimes self gets us in trouble. Y'all, the flesh man gets weak. Documents that I was reading earlier uh, talks about secular, I told you it talks about the secular world and how the secular world is looking at things. And one of the things that the writer is trying to show us and trying to get us to understand is that most of the time because of sexuality, Sigmund Freud said it best. He, he, Sigmund Freud said, something like this. He said, sex has become the most complacent thing that can capture anybody and keep anybody's attention. But y'all, if we, what if we lose ourselves and we don't conform to this world? I told you last week, you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Look, and if you begin to renew yourself, if you have a renewing of your mind, if you have a renewing of your spirit, man, if you have a renewing of who God wants you to be, baby, you never have to worry about a thing because when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, you all, you'll begin to have happiness even when you want to be sad. This passage, as we have seen above, is a collection of sayings. The outline of this particular passage, as Bach clearly analyzes, falls like this. The first thing is the new way of discipleship, called to take up your cross, called to lose your life for Christ's sake, only to save others, called not to be ashamed, by the son of man. Don't be ashamed about who you serve. I understand y'all that some individuals, some people don't want to hear you talking about Christ. You know, it, 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 uh, at some companies we work for, at some businesses that we're in, y'all, they don't want you talking about Christ. They don't want you telling them your belief system. They don't want you talking about anything except for what your job is. But I've learned sometimes even when they don't want that, I still have to steal away. I still have to put my gospel music in my ear and I still have to listen and begin to praise God. And oh, what if somebody walks by and see me shouting or see tears in my eyes? Baby, I'm just thinking about how good God has been to me. Because he's called some things to happen when I said, Lord, it's for you I live. It's for you I, I, I'll die. It's for you I have my very being. Y'all, I lost myself to him. I gave up some of those things of the world. I gave up those things that, that were hindering me from seeing what God was doing and how God was working. And I began to live the life that God wanted me to live in front of others. 
Y'all, one thing I'm going to tell you is you can't be ashamed to let people know that you serve a God that's able. Y'all remember John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but they shall have everlasting life. And if I ask someone right now, do you know where you will spend eternity? Do you know where your life is going to end up? Are you truly being the disciple that God wants you to be? Some of us would never be able to answer that question. Because we want to be tied up in the secular world. We want to live for the world, but then we're trying to live for Christ. Look, you can't, you, he said he'd rather you be hot or cold, not lukewarm, because if you're lukewarm, he'll spit you out. And I'm just simply saying this, he wants you to either be for him or against him. Choose this day who you're going to serve. When, when it's your time to be called, when, when your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, have, what are you going to answer? Is he going to say, servant, well done? Is he going to see something in you and realize and remember those things that you gave up to live for him? Y'all, a lot of us, a lot of us are at a point right now where we, 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 we feel like we haven't done everything that we're supposed to do in life and we're failing. But let me tell you this, if God breathed breath in your life, if God breathed breath into you on this morning and allowed you to see a brand new day, baby, you better start living for him because, look, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, when I gave it up and gave it over to the Lord, I didn't have to worry about a thing. Look, we, 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 we have been trying to purchase a home, trying to purchase a home for almost two and a half years. And I, got, I, I really got tired around the third year because I didn't like being rejected. I didn't like the fact that I wasn't where I should be in life. And I told my wife, I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to look at anything. And one day God simply said, look, you have enough faith inside of you. You know who I am and you know what I'm capable of doing. Y'all and I stretched out on faith and I did what God asked me to do. I just typed in some words on a computer. Sunday morning, I remember I sent, I sent Sister Collins my sermon for that Sunday and I was just sitting in my office and just talking to God and thanking God about everything that he's done for me. And God just simply said, type the name. Y'all, I typed the name in of the builder for the home. Y'all, we came out, we, we we saw a house, we called the realtor, we told the realtor we found what we were looking for. The realtor came in town, said, can you meet me on Tuesday? We came, we looked at the home. The realtor said, do you like it? Do you want it? Y'all, and all we said was, yes, it's ours. Y'all, while the realtor was here, we began to pray. We began to ask God to bless us with something that he would be pleased in our works. And God wrote, wrote it out for us and said, it is so. It is so. Y'all, when we, when, when we uh, found out uh, everything was going to work out in our favor, Y'all, there was, there was a night, a Tuesday night after Bible study that I was trying to figure out why I was getting messages from the, from, from the Veterans Administration Office. Y'all, when I logged in and I saw uh, something on my computer screen, I, I yelled out, thank you. It was a loud shout that I yelled out right afterwards because my wife came running around the corner. And she said, what's wrong? Your back still hurting you? And I said, I couldn't say a word, y'all. I could just point at the screen because I had tears rolling down my eyes. Y'all, it said 100%. That right there opened doors because God was working some stuff out because I was being faithful to him. I wasn't worried about what people said. I wasn't worried about what man might say. All I was worried about and focused on is what God could do. Because 
Look, I had to learn a long time ago that discipleship meant, meant more than just uh, saying I, I, I'm teaching somebody else. Discipleship means living it in front of others. Y'all, and there's some days, there's some days, even when, I, when I'm discipling others, there's some days, y'all, that I get discouraged. That I get so discouraged that in my discouragement, in my time, that I'm discouraged about which way we are going. I get sidetracked. I get caught off guard. But then I still remember whose hand I'm in. And I begin to tell God, thank you for keeping my tongue from those evil thoughts, my mind from those evil thoughts, my tongue from those evil words that wanted to come out that you didn't allow to happen. Y'all was driving on the freeway. Somebody cut me off. And I had to remind myself with everything going on in the world right now. I don't want to become another statistic. So in my discipling, I realized the only cost that it cost me, really, it didn't cost me anything, but it cost Christ everything. Somebody gonna catch that in a little, by, little, little while. It, it didn't cost me anything, but it cost Christ everything. What are you saying? It cost Christ his life. It cost Christ that he had to die on a cross. It cost him something. Really, it didn't cost us anything, but it cost him everything. Look, in verse 23, it says, Then he said to all, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life shall, have to, shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, this one shall save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? Y'all, we so worried about worldly games. We ain't th thinking about heavenly games. What does it profit the world? But to lose his soul, to forfeit himself. For whosoever is ashamed of me and my words, of this one will the Son of Man be shamed when he comes into glory. Of the Father and of the Holy Spirit. In fact, tell you truly, there are some of those standing here who shall certainly not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Y'all, I had to understand some stuff because when I looked at the text and he said, then he said to all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he was giving that to all of us. He was letting us know if any of us want to come after him, we have to deny ourselves. We have to pick up our cross and follow him daily. Y'all, it, it, it's not, it's not a, a, a weekly thing. It's not a monthly thing, but he said daily. That means every day that we wake up, there's a point that we have to deny self. We have to lay down and, and pick up a cross and carry it because we want to follow him. In following him, I, 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 I can't, I don't have time to follow them. Because see, when I'm following him, I'm looking towards the hills from which cometh my help. Because I know that my help comes from the Lord. And because my help comes from the Lord, I'm not ashamed of the God I serve. Y'all, you got individuals that say they trust in God, but as soon as they're challenged about why they trust in God, why they believe in God like they believe, y'all, they run for the hills. Discipleship is meaningful in the world that we live in today. But it's too many people that are focused on the secular age and what it means to do X, Y, and Z instead of doing what thus said the Lord. Y'all, again, I tell you, we, we all stumble and fall. We all fall short of his glory. But you got to remember that in falling short, God's simply saying, all I need you to do is stand. Stand firm on my words. Stand for me. Deny yourself. Give up those things that are not like me. 
Y'all, again, sometimes that's hard for us to do. Sometimes that's, that's even harder if, if we don't know what, what, when we're coming or going. But God is simply saying, look, you put your trust in me. Because if you put your trust in me, you ain't got time to trust in them. Because see, them will cause you to lose your soul. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Y'all, you got to remember what he said in his word, because if you start remembering what God said in his word, you'll start understanding what he has for you is for you. But you have to be willing to be the disciples that he wants you to be. In verse 24, when he says, for whoever wishes to save his life, look, in saving your life, he say you shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, it's got to be for him. If you lose it for him, this one he's going to save. He's going to save you. He's going to pick you up. He's going to dust you off. Y'all, he's going to put you on the straight and narrow path. Y'all, sometimes, sometimes in, in, in the world that we live in, y'all, we're so caught up in what the world is doing that we try to make things fit for the world instead of, instead of fitting for the word of God. I told you, some of us get so afraid and so scared to stand on what we believe and why we believe it. Baby, if you don't believe me, when the Jehovah Witness knocks on your door, or, or somebody comes knocking on your, on your door trying to spread the good news, or trying to share something with you from the watchtower, don't be afraid to sit down with them and, and talk to them and let them know when they ask you that question, are you saved? Baby, you need to stand firm and say, I'm saved by the grace of God. When they ask you, how, how do you know you saved? You, you tell them, I, 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 have, I, I have confessed with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God raised his son from the dead. Y'all, y'all think I'm playing with you? Uh, some time ago, back in 2014, 2015, I was living uh, in, in humble and I was there at my house and there was a knock on my front door. My office is in the front of the house. And there was a knock on my front door. And you know, we got those new doorbells now where we can look and see who it is that's on there. We can look and see who it is that's, that, that's there on, uh, at that time. Y'all, and I saw who it was. And I got up, I walked to the door. I said, hello, how you doing? They said, we want to introduce God to you. I say, I know him. They say, oh, you know him? I say, yes, I do. I say, you want to come in, sit for a while, have, have a soda, have, have something to drink? They said, sure, because we want to share the good news with you. Y'all, they, they didn't know who I was. They, they didn't know me from the next man that, whose house they were going to knock on. Y'all, we, we sat down, they sat in front of my desk, and we were talking. And as we were talking, uh, they one of them started looking around the room. And when he started looking around the room, y'all, I used to have bookcases on two shelves. And he looked around the room and saw all these books and all these Bibles. And they were like, you believe? I say, I'm a real believer. I say, it took me a minute to get where I'm at. But I believe that God laid down his life for me. I believe that God, uh, son, Jesus was raised from the dead. I believe. In my belief and me standing on what I believe and, and talking to them. I said, now I got a question for you. Do you believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do you believe in the triune God? Do you believe in the Trinity? And they look confused. They look dazed. That's why you often hear people say, be careful how you entertain strangers because they might be angels on the way. You got to be careful how you deal with people and how people deal with you because they don't know what type of God, what type of Christ you have on the inside of you. And baby, if you got enough for him on the inside, he'll allow you to stand up and speak for him. Y'all, they said, oh, well, we got to run. We got other houses. I said, well, I welcome you to come back. They said, we'll be back. 
in a couple of days. Y'all, I never heard from him again. I never saw him in the neighborhood. I don't know what happened, but I think something got a hold of them when I began to tell them how I believe, why I believe what I believe. Y'all, because I, I was doing discipleship right then. So you can't be afraid to be a disciple for Christ because it didn't cost you anything. It didn't cost you anything to accept him. It didn't cost you anything. All you had to do was lay down your life. Deny yourself. That's all you had to do. You ain't have to worry about nothing else. See, you, you, can't, you can't worry and praise him at the same time. You can't worry and say you thank him at the same time. You can't worry and say he's your personal savior. Baby, if you're wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in him, y'all, you got to understand the God we serve. Y'all, the God we serve is able. It says to do exceedingly and abundantly, but all we could ever ask or think. According to the power, y'all know you got power on the inside of you, right? You know God has, he's placed some power in you. Y'all, we might not walk around with no blue spandex to no red tights on, but I guarantee you we got some super strength. Because God has instilled power on the inside of us. But look, I had to understand that even in God instilling power on the inside of us, Every day wasn't going to be a good day. Every day wasn't going to be a perfect day. Every day wasn't going to ever be howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. Every day. Y'all, I sit back, and I thought about it. One of my professors, when I was at the College of Biblical Studies, challenged me. Dr. Klubnik came and, and asked, do you know what true discipleship was? Y'all, he gave me... This little silver coin right here. He say, I challenge you to challenge others as you prepare yourself for the lessons that you're getting ready. To I challenge you to challenge others. One side says, where will you spend eternity? In direction of John chapter three, verse 36. And the other side tells you John chapter three, verse 16. Y'all, there were times where I was sitting in Starbucks and I was Working on my assignment, had to get away from the house because, you know, TVs and everything that's in the house tend to distract you from what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And, and you get caught up and entangled and you miss out on what it is that you're supposed to do. And, and, and you mess around and you're trying to rush and do it. So I had to remember, hey, you got to steal away sometimes. So I went to Starbucks by the house and I sat in Starbucks and now I was typing uh, my papers and doing some research and everything else. Uh, somebody, uh, it was a young man and a young lady that came by. And as they came by, they sat down and they said, look, what are you doing? I see you over here with all these, these books on the table. What are you studying? What are you writing? And I told them, I say, look, I, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing a paper based off discipleship. And I got a couple of questions if you have time that I would love to ask you. I asked them the first question off the coin from John chapter three, verse 16. And I asked them, do you know where you're going if you die? If you leave here tomorrow, are you confident in knowing that you have a place in heaven not made by man's hand? That you have a place in heaven where the streets are paved with gold? That you have a place in heaven where they're going to put on your robe in glory. And you'll be able to shout and tell your story about how he brought you through. Because, see, man can't bring you through like he does. See, we get caught up thinking that man is doing this and doing that. Man, man is making a way from it. Man ain't doing anything but keeping and causing trouble in your life. Look, I'm a firm believer. There's some right now, some watching, some viewing, there's some making comments, there's some that, that have said what they needed to say. But what I want to tell you right now is that if you learn to deny yourself daily, I know somebody saying that's hard to do because I have these no good people on my job that tend to tick me off and mess me up all over, have me all over the place and I'll be ready to tell them about themselves. 
somebody saying, well, you know, he cut me off and I wasn't getting ready to just let him cut me off. I had to catch up with him and look at him some, some type of way and tell him, uh, spit a couple of words, roll the window down and say what I needed to say to him. But sometimes if you just deny yourself and let it go, if you let those things go, I guarantee you he's going to direct you to where you need to get to. In Luke chapter 9, 23, discipleship can be summarized in three conditions. The deny oneself, the take up your cross daily, and the follow Jesus. First and foremost, if we're going to be real disciples, we should learn how to deny ourselves. We should learn how to deny ourselves. The idea of self-denial is a hapax in the New Testament. Self-denial means not only to say no to oneself. Remember, you got to say it to yourself. But you also have to be prepared for the rejection and excommunication that you're going to receive from those who don't want to hear what you got to offer. I told you, you got to stand on what you believe and believe and, and, and stand and let them know that you believe for a reason. Because, see, they ain't going to let it go. They're going to try to keep spewing and spilling stuff into you, letting you know, hey, well, you know, this says this in, in our book, The Watchtower, it says X, Y, Z. Well, baby, let me encourage you and tell you something. This is what the Bible says. And because I am a believer in the word of God, I'm not worried about a thing. Look, crucifixion in that time was a common way of execution in Palestine. And the metaphor, the meaning of it was quite obvious. To take up one's cross signifies to be ready to die. And I know some of us are saying, I'm not ready for death. Again, I tell you, it's not a physical death that he's talking about. He's not just talking about a physical death. He's talking about a spiritual death. He's talking about the not dying to some things that are of the world. And see, that's a lot of our problems. We don't want to die to nothing that's of the world. We want to stay focused on what the world has to offer. But if you pick up your Bible a little bit and you begin to read and you begin to understand what his word said, it, 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 it will, it will it be a light unto your pathway. Y'all, I'm a firm believer that God has something in store for each and every one of us. That's why at the beginning of the year, I challenged my members. I challenged friends. I said, look, I need you to understand what your purpose is to God. Not what your purpose is to man. Not what your purpose is to me. Not what your purpose is to the church. But the first person I need you to understand is your purpose to God. Are you living how he wants you to live? Are you doing what he wants you to do? Are you allowing him to work in your life? Are you allowing him to show up and show out in your life? Baby, let me tell you something. If you begin to understand what your purpose is, when it comes to discipleship, you'll begin to do what God wants you to do. You won't have a problem with denying self. You won't be afraid of being excommunicated. Because all you're going to remember and think about is what he said he's going to do for you. He says, I shall give you eternal life. Y'all, and I don't know about you, but I, I want e life eternal. I, I want to live in heaven. Not like I live down here, but I want to live in heaven. I want to be able to rejoice. I want to be able to tell others how I made it over. I want to be able to tell others how he blessed me. Y'all, I'm talking about right here on this physical world. I, I, I realize what my purpose is. My purpose is not, not, not to really worry about self, but my purpose is to be able to be a help to others that need help and guidance in Christ Jesus. Look, I promise y'all, he has something in store for each of us, if we would just deny ourselves. So you said, Pastor Jay, you said you want to know what the cost is. What does it cost us? It costs you denying yourself. It costs you 
laying down your life. It cost you picking up a cross. It cost you following him. But when you really balance it out, when you really look at it for yourself, it really didn't cost you anything. Because on a hill called Calvary, he died for your sins and mine. So we wouldn't have to hang on the cross. He died for us. But yet and still, he's still telling us today that you have to deny yourself. You have to pick up your cross and follow me. Baby, if you begin to learn and, and listen to what God is saying, you'll understand that God has something in store for you that's greater than your, 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 your right now. God has something great in store for you in your life. And all you have to do is be willing to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. Baby, I'd rather follow him than follow them. Because, see, them only going to last me for a little while. But when I follow him, it lasts me for a lifetime. See, I had to realize that when he died for our sins, when he rose on the third day morning, it really didn't cost us nothing. Because he had already paid the price. He had already laid down his life and sacrificed himself. So we could do and become better for him. And somebody's missing it. Somebody doesn't understand it. You have people in the church right now that don't understand that it's not about you all the time. It's not about what people can do for you. It's not about what people can do for others. It's about what you all can do for Christ. I promise you one thing, that if you stop focusing on negativity and start focusing on what God wants you to focus on, he can heal your body. He can bless your life. He can give you joy, unspeakable joy. But you got to remember, you got to deny yourself. And in denying yourself, that means giving up the foolishness, giving up the nonsense, giving up talking bad about others, giving up lying, giving up cheating, giving up whatever it might be that you need to give up. Some people out there looking for a husband. Well, baby, you got to learn to get rid of the one that don't belong to you right now. In order so God can bless you with the one that he wants you to have. My wife is a living testimony. She can tell you a story. There's somebody out there that's willing to do what God wants them to do for you in your life. And you got to be receptive. You got to get rid of what don't belong. And allow what God wants to bless you with. To be your blessing. Discipleship doesn't cost us really anything with the exception of denying self, taking up our cross, and following him. God bless you and keep you on tonight. That's Bible study. I pray that someone has been helped in this place on this evening. Uh, look, we want to just tell God, thank you for what he's done, what he's doing in each one of our lives. And there might be someone right now uh, that doesn't know God and the pardons of your sin, doesn't know who our Savior really is. Well, let me encourage you and invite you to get to know him better. Uh, if you want to become a member here, all you have to do is go to our church webpage, www.pogch.org. Click on become a member. I'll reach out to you within 24 hours. If you don't want to do that, just pick up the phone and call me, 936-331-9338. That's the number here at the church. If you reach out and pick up and call us here at 936-331-9338, look, I'll pick up the phone. I'll pray with you. I'll talk with you. I'll let you know what thus said the Lord, and I'll teach you and walk you up the Romans road of salvation just so you'll know that you're saved because some don't know if they're saved or not. Some are looking for salvation. Some are looking for God to guide them. And all I'm simply saying to you is let God do what he going to do for you in your life. I don't know 
what you've come to do on today, but I just want to bless the name of God. Our Father in, in heaven, we pray right now, God, that you, God, get all the increase, God, that you, God, will be referenced in everything that we do. God, that you, God, as we dismiss on tonight, God, that you reveal yourself to those that need a revelation, that you show yourself as the healer, provider, and the way out of no way that you are. God, we lift everything up to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Amen. God keep you. Uh, you can join us on Monday nights for our Pillar Power Prayer Hour uh, and Tuesday nights for our Bible study at 7.13 p.m. both nights. Amen. Uh, we're here, uh, right here on Facebook. We're on uh, YouTube. We're on Zoom. Uh, and we just believe in blessing God uh, as much as we possibly can. Uh, God bless and keep you, everyone. Uh, I love you all with the love of God. And I pray God's choice blessings in your life. Look, remember... Uh, on tomorrow, uh, tomorrow being Wednesday, we're in the middle of the work week. We're in the middle of uh, the week. And, and y'all, we still have to give God praise for what he's doing. Uh, I'm so grateful to everyone that got on the call on tonight. And I pray uh, that each one of you all have a blessed evening and you go with God in peace. Uh, God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Have a great night, everyone. Amen. You too, Pastor. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Love you guys.